In this one, we're going to go ahead and actually create our database. So in the previous one, we created our entities. What we need to do now is run some commands which read the metadata on those entities, i.e. the annotations, and converts that information to SQL. And then we'll run some more commands or another command which will take that SQL and create the, data, the tables in our database. So I decided that I was personally going to use Docker. Uh, like I said previously, if you want to use whatever database you've got installed on your machine, no problem, go ahead and do that. But at least by doing this way, I'm showing another way and then it will be useful to at least someone uh, to see how Docker integrates with Symfony. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience. And if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon, and welcome. The first thing we're going to do is create a docker compose file. So we can use this command here, which I've left in the notes.txt file. I'll leave, I'll leave this file under version control so you can grab it from the uh, GitHub repo for this project. And then you can just uh, copy and paste these commands if you want. But this first one is php bin console make colon docker colon database. So let's go and actually paste that in the terminal. And so it'll ask you a question. Uh, it'll say there's no Docker Compose file could be found, so a new one will be generated. And then it'll ask you which database service will you be using? So I'm going to choose MySQL. So I select zero. What version would you like to use? I'm going to use version 8.0. Okay, and so then you'll see these parts here. Uh, it'll tell you what your next steps are, which is to run Docker Compose up. But before we do that, I'm just going to go and have a look at the Docker Compose file, which has been generated there. So I'll hit enter. Before I spin this up, there's one more change I want to make. But I'll talk you through this anyway. So it's saying we're using uh, version 3.7 for Docker Compose. And then under that, we list our services. And so we have defined just one service, and that is database. The Docker image that we are using is MySQL version 8. And then it sets up some environment variables uh, for our database. And they are a password, which we'll just leave uh, the default, which it just creates here, which is password, and the actual database name, which is main. And then it says which ports. So this is quite important. 3306 is the actual port on the container, not on the host machine. What it will do by leaving it like this is it will just uh, select ports sort of at semi-random uh, as and when we run uh, docker compose up. The one change I am going to make or the one addition I am going to make is going to add a volume mapping. And so this will map a folder on my host machine to one inside the container. So on my host machine, I'm going to call this MySQL, so that will uh, be found in the project root here in the promotions engine project root and then I say colon and then var lib my SQL and the reason I've done this is just to preserve the data in between running doc and compose up and running it down if I didn't do this then every time I um, shut Docker Compose down with Docker Compose down, then what would happen is that all my data will be lost. So by doing this volume mapping here, it means that my data will always be preserved. Okay, so let's talk about Docker itself, because in order for this to work, you need to have Docker Desktop installed on your machine. So if you go to uh, this address here, I'll leave it on the screen. This is the actual setup for Mac, but as you can see here, it says also available on Windows and Linux. Very simple to install, just follow those installation instructions and then you'll have Docker Desktop on your machine and then you'll be able to copy all of the commands which I use from here on in. And so with Docker up and running, back to my notes file, I'll copy this next command which is docker compose up hyphen D. So as you can see there it's saying creating network promotions engine underscore default and then it's saying it's creating promotions engine underscore database underscore one. So I'll show you a couple of things here first. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that I now have a MySQL folder. So what I'm actually gonna do 
is go to my git ignore file and add that on there because I don't want uh, my data that I create being held in version control and then I'll go back and I'll just show you this other command here so symphony var expert multiline if I paste that in there and hit enter so here you'll see some environment variables which have been created and some of these might look familiar so we have a database which is main which is the same name as we gave our database in our docker compose file uh, driver is mysql host is localhost and then we'll see this database url here mysql uh, is using root as the user and password as the password and then we have the host and a port so like i said before a port is chosen sort of at semi-random and so now this is our database url uh, now typically if you're using your local database if you look at your .env file you will be using whatever is uh, defined in there which um, the default one is this postgres one here but because i'm using um, the docker integration that means that i'm actually using this one here so this database url environment variable is used in preference to this one if we go and look at our configuration so in packages doctrine.yaml and then you'll see doctrine dbal url and we have this environment variable here database url so what happens with the symphony docker integration is that this bit refers to the service name so this prefix is actually a naming convention this is a symphony docker integration documentation and as you can see here uh, some services have default symphony prefixes one of those being database so as you can see here database underscore this database name here actually refers to what we defined in our docker compose file so that will match to that and the same happens with other services which you can use as you can see here we've got redis memcached rabbit mq uh, elastic search mailer these all have default symphony prefixes and you can define them in your docker compose file the same way as what we've defined our mysql database so just in case any of this looks like magic to you there's a bit of an explanation i'd highly recommend having a look at the uh, docker integration documentation which you see here and that'll explain it much better than what i can and in much greater detail but to get things working all you need to do is follow the commands which i use here so let's go back to notes we've done docker compose up what we need to do now is actually generate that SQL. So uh, like I said at the beginning, what's going to happen by running this command here, which is symphony console make colon migration. So very important that you use the symphony binary here, symphony console instead of PHP bin console, because we're actually using the Docker integration. So make sure that you prefix it with symphony and not PHP bin console like we've done up to now. And then what this will do is it will look at the database, look at our uh, entities, read the annotations on those entities, see what's different between the entities and the database and generate SQL to make those changes. So let's hit go. And so it says, uh, review the new migration. So a new migration file has been created for us and that can be found in migrations. And here it is. So what I'll do behind the scenes is I'll just tidy this up to make it a little easier to read. Let's have a quick whirl through this. So product, fairly straightforward. ID, int, auto increment, and then price is int, not null. Uh, then we have product promotion, which sits between our product and our promotion. So uh, ID, auto incrementing, product ID, promotion ID, and then we said valid two. And then you'll notice our two indexes here, uh, which refer to the product ID and the promotion ID. Then we have our promotion, so ID, name, type, adjustment, and criteria. And then you'll see that we have a couple of foreign keys. So product ID on the product promotions table points to ID on the product table. And then we have the promotion ID on the product promotion table points to the ID um, field on the promotion table. So far so good, but this hasn't been created in our database yet. What we need to do is actually go and run 
a final command in order to generate those tables. So I'll copy this and then we'll paste that in there. So again, we need to make sure that we're prefixing this with Symphony Console and it is Doctrine Migrations Migrate. And so I'll ask you if you're sure that you want to actually run this command, just say yes. Okay, and so now it's telling us that the migrations have been executed, we should be able to go and look at our tables. Before I go and look at those, I need to just get the port. So where I did the Symfony file export, if I run that command again, and then I can see that the port I'm using is 50948. So I'll copy that, and then I go over to table plus, and here I'm just gonna edit my MySQL connection. So I could call this connection anything, that doesn't matter. As you can see, the host is localhost, uh, the user is root, password is password, so we got that from our docker compose file. Let's go back and have a quick look at that just to remind ourselves. So as you can see here, MySQL root password is what that is referring to and the database name was main. And then we had a port number, which was 50948. So we paste that in there. Then I'll just test this connection, all green, which tells me that it's working. So let's connect. Okay, so here you can see that my tables have been created as well as one other table which holds the uh, Doctrine Migrations. So that will have one record in and that is uh, to refer to our Doctrine uh, version file where our SQL is defined and then here we should have empty tables. So product which just has ID and price, product promotion which has, which has the four fields there, product ID, promotion ID and valid two and then we have promotion. And if we look at the structure, uh, it'll tell you what the data types are. And because we're using MySQLite, uh, then we don't need a workaround to use JSON. We can actually use JSON in there. And so that completes our database setup. It might look like a lot of information, but in reality, we only really ran four commands. If we go and look at our notes file, uh, we just wrote, uh, wrote four commands, one to create a, a Docker compose file, and then we went and made edits or quick edit to that Docker Compose file. And then we ran Docker Compose up, which ran up all our services in the Docker Compose file, created our migration, so our version file, and then we just executed that SQL in the version file to create our database, which is what you see here. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full-length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.